Today, on this part number 17 of Gog and Magog, firstly look at the map that I have on my side. You can see a series of names, Gomer, Magog, Togarma, Mishek and Tubal, and this is a map of 1874. And these nations, or names, were situated like this on a map, in a certain place. Today we are going to see something that has to do with this, slightly yes, because we already talked about this, but someone's declarations appear that are quite interesting. Don't miss what we are going to show today, especially the final part of this conference, because now everything starts to reveal itself with much clarity to where this is leading. Let's begin. Well, taking a look at what many of these Jewish rabbis believe, look, Israel's top rabbi hints Russia-Ukraine war is sign of Messiah's arrival. Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky, one of the most prominent rabbis of this generation, was asked about the conflict in Ukraine. His answer was unequivocal, the final redemption is imminent. Yeshiva World reported on Tuesday that the rabbi was asked if there was anything to be done to help the Jews of Ukraine. This was quite some months ago. He responded that Jews around the world should become stronger in prayer and Torah study. When asked if anything could be done to be saved from Chivli Moshiach, birth pangs of Messiah, the difficulties preceding the arrival of the Messiah, again Rabbi Kanievsky responded to become stronger in Torah study as well as engaging in Gemilut Chasadim, acts of loving kindness. The rabbi cited Bereshish Rabbah, which states, Rabbi Elazar Bar Avina said, If you see kingdoms taunting each other, you can anticipate the footsteps of the Messiah. The Midrash bases this on the age of Abraham, in which kings were battling each other, which culminated in Abraham's redemption. You can see the comparatives they use. It should be noted that Rabbi Kanievsky is a mainstream Torah scholar and never made any public statements predicting the arrival of the Messiah. This changed in 2015 when at age of 87 Rabbi Kanievsky declared the Messiah was imminent. This message was accompanied by the Rabbi urging that the Jews in exile return to Israel immediately. Since that declaration Rabbi Kanievsky has made countless comments affirming that this is his belief prayer and Torah study. But more news respecting this. Putin threatens to bring the Zechariah's prophetic nuclear war. For the third time this month, Russian President Vladimir Putin is threatening to deploy tactical nuclear weapons. Should this threat be realized, it would conform to several aspects of the Gog and Magog war as described by the prophets. This also has quite some time, some months. Earlier this month, before invading Ukraine, Putin responded to threats by Western countries to intervene should he decide to invade. Of course, the military potential of NATO and Russia are incomparable. We understand it, Putin said at a press conference. But we also understand that Russia is one of the leading nuclear states, and by some modern components it even outperforms many. Last week, Putin warned that whoever tries to hinder us in Ukraine would see consequences you have never seen in your history. Should the war escalate into nuclear weapons, this would conform to a Gog and Magog scenario. The war of Gog and Magog is described in prophecy as being an unusually short war. A tradition from the Vilna Gaon, a prominent 18th century Torah authority, teaches that the war of Gog and Magog will last 12 minutes. What things, eh? According to a 20th century interpretation, a third of the world will die, a third will suffer from plague, and a third will survive. Well, they are all deductions that they evidently arrive to, but of course not all of them are right. This 18th century prophecy of a 12 minute war was surprising as it came several hundred years before the advent of nuclear weapons. Conventional wars necessarily last much longer and such a quick war was inconceivable at the time. Such a short war, possibly a nuclear exchange, may have been hinted at in the Bible. 
at eventide behold terror and before the morning they are not isaiah chapter 17 verse 14 as you can see this is where they extract these things or at least that is how they interpret it the prophecy hints at a swift and all-encompassing catastrophe similar to nuclear war Another prophecy hints at the gruesome after-effects of nuclear war described by the prophet Zechariah in reference to the pre-Messiah war of Gog and Magog. And they quote Zechariah 14.12 As for those peoples that warned against Yerushalayim, Hashem will smite them with this plague. Their flesh shall rot away while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall rot away in their sockets and their tongues shall rot away in their mouths. Well, it is what they describe as a nuclear war. It is interesting to see how they speak of this aspect, but of course, evidently, a war of 12 minutes is not the one in Ukraine. And if it were to be something, it would be something just right before the coming of Christ, precisely in the plagues. Well, it lasts 12 minutes, and where do they get this from? Well, this is their thing because biblically it is impossible to get to this and as you can see all of this is extracted from an evangelical and very Zionist media after Russia opens fire on Israel in Syria rabbis consider possible Gog Magog scenario you can notice that it is practically one news after another media reports claim that a Russian S-300 anti-air battery opened fire on Friday night against IDF warplanes operating over northwestern Syria marking the first time Russia has actively interfered with an Israeli air attack in Syria see how here you can start seeing the thing between Russia and Israel the fact that the maneuver originated in the north and was executed by Moscow has rabbis in Israel noticing several parallels to the war of Gog and Magog as prophesied in the book of Ezekiel. O mortal, turn your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, prophesy against him. Ezekiel 38 verse 2 Two possible Gog and Magog scenarios. Rabbi Ken Spiro, a historian and senior lecturer and researcher for Aish HaTorah Yeshiva, stated that this new development adds new and conflicting elements to regional politics and could conform to a possible Gog and Magog scenario. Most people mistakenly believe that Gog and Magog will be all of the nations rising up against Israel, Rabbi Spiro said. That is only one possible scenario and if this happens these nations will be punished for this though Gog and Magog are certainly going to be multinational there are Jewish sources that describe nations turning against each other it could be Esau against Ishmael this is Esau and Ishmael it could be that this is the plague Ezekiel describes is that all of the nations will turn against each other one thing for sure is that evil united is not good for the world EU, the European Union, is actually an acronym for Evil United, and we see that the only thing that unites them is a hatred of Israel. Well, you can see how they face the European Union. People try to frame international relations in black and white, when it is a big mix of varying shades of grey, Rabbi Spiro said. Well, it is worth mentioning that if behind the European Union is the Vatican, and the secret societies but the Vatican with all its weight is he saying that it is convenient for the Vatican for Israel to be antagonic to them that they have problems between them well this would be the conclusion that we could get out of this even though they don't know what is really behind the European Union it is used to be that way with half the world allied against communism in the Cold War but since the fall of the Soviet Union, there are a lot of different players pulling in a lot of different directions. No country is entirely the enemy of another, and alliances are nuanced. Even among the Muslims, you have Sunni against Shia and Arab against non-Arab. The US used to be Israel's strongest, unshakable ally, but that is no longer the case. That is what this man is saying, this rabbi. 
Putin is not entirely against Israel, making him the first Russian leader to take that position, Rabbi Spiro said. But he has a lot of personal interests. The Russians have always wanted a port on the Mediterranean, and in Syria they finally have that. Well, this explanation at least is interesting on a geopolitical and military level. There is a change in the status quo between Israel and Putin. He has turned up the heat, sending a strong message that since the world has turned against him, Israel should be careful not to join. There are a lot of more drastic actions he could have taken. His bottom line is what is good for Putin's political survival. A man does not sin unless a crazy spirit enters him. Rabbi Binchas Wiston explained that when God wanted to make great changes in the world, like a spark of the war of Gog and Magog, he first had to install the specific person in power who will bring the event into reality. Biblically, this is a completely logical deduction. So for something to happen, the Lord moves also the adequate people so that something happens or stops happening. World War II may have been inevitable, but the Holocaust would never have happened if the German ruler was a normal, sane person, Rabbi Winston said. It took a Hitler. The rabbi cited the verse from Proverbs, like channeled water is the mind of the king in Hashem's hand. He directs it to whatever he wishes. Proverbs 21.1 When God wanted to take the Jews out of Egypt, the first thing he did was change the pharaohs, Rabbi Winston said, citing the Talmud, Sotar 3a, which states, A man does not sin unless a crazy spirit enters him. A normal person as a leader would never bring about the war of Gog and Magog. The world has a disturbingly large supply of sociopaths, but the last couple of months have shown us without a doubt that Putin is filled with precisely the kind of craziness that would allow him to lead nations into an end of days war. That he is firmly in power indicates where we are potentially headed. On the other side, God brought Joe Biden into power. He is clearly just a figurehead. Well, it is curious to see how clear they have this concept. But he is a unique figurehead who has allowed so many catastrophes to happen in such a short period of time. This is for considering, hey? This is unnatural for a president of the United States. After watching the southern border crisis continue unabated after the Afghanistan debacle, after leading the country into 8.5% inflation, Biden is clearly the kind of leader who can watch the world descend into chaos and despair and not try to stop it. Well, these are quite some conclusions that he gets to with the puppets Biden. Well, now we are going to see two videos, one after the other. The first one that is also extracted from the web page that we've been looking at. It says, Iran, a silent danger for humanity. It is from the 17th of May of 2022, the year that this conference was originally made. To see these videos, you can go down to the description of this one and there you will find the links. Well, as you have seen, it is from the CBN News. It is a North American channel from the United States. And some people were giving different analysis of what is cooking already in Middle East. And this obviously can affect the world globally. And of course, the nuclear matter in the middle of everything. And what a nuclear matter. Anyway, while this is preparing in this manner, we have this video also over the 17th of May of 2022 and it says is war coming to Israel? Let's see what it says. You've seen how interesting it is the description that he gives of those names of Meshach, Tubal, etc. and what they are nowadays as nations which we've been showing throughout all these conferences and the map that I had at the beginning of this one and if you've noticed, he talks about all this coalition to attack Israel, to at the end extract resources, not only to get the power over the land. And I don't know if we are seeing that the interpretation that the Jews get to of the prophecies of the texts of Ezekiel 
as it is exposed in the Bible, it is a fact that is going to happen. But on top of that, we've also seen how the Adventist pioneers also believed in this aspect. Many evangelicals also continue to believe this. And it gets to a point in the biblical text that, after this conflict occurs, it turns out that something happens. Just as we showed in the last chapter, in the following chapters of Ezekiel 38 and 39, in chapter 40 and onwards, it talks to us about a temple. Therefore, we are seeing, and as we saw in, at the beginning, that there are parts of the prophecy that could be applied for a future and others that could not because the circumstances changed and the nation of Israel did not follow the Lord as it should have. And you already know what's happened with the death of Christ. The Jews were finished. So Satan, that is not stupid, what does he do? He is going to prepare what he precisely knows is prophesied because it appears in the book of Ezekiel and the whole event is being prepared. But later, what is he going to do to deceive the people? There in the biblical text, it says that there will be a temple. But is it God's will for there to be a temple now? No, because that was to be in the case that the nation of Israel did what they were supposed to at that moment. And it would have served to, so as all the nations, etc, etc, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and what is Satan going to do now? will make those texts that have no application for now because the prophecies were conditional he is going to make it happen and the third temple of Jerusalem will be built therefore the deception is served with everything that will come that you already know what that is the papacy there and who else the appearance of Satan pretending to be the Messiah to be Christ do we realize where all this matter of Gog and Magog is leading to? Yes, maybe until now we have not seen it clearly, right? It has not been said during all this subject. But it is time to see it clearly. To what kind of deception is the world going to fall to? The steps are being made completely. Part of the prophecy will be applied evidently, yes. And the other part will be falsified. Do we understand how this is working? Satan is working and very well for the disgrace of the world and we should be warning everyone about what Gog and Magog is about and the implication it has in a close future because this is about the great deception the appearance of Satan coming as if he were Christ and then everyone there in the temple will see that world union and the beginning of that millennium that was waited for so long, as we saw in the colloquium that we presented lately. Once more, we must see things much further on to be able to say that it is just wars and rumors of wars, because this has an implication until the end of days, and of course not only for the whole world, but above all for God's people that can be fully deceived. If it is unaware of the plans, strategies and tricks of Satan and that is why God warned us. One more news. 75 years ago Rabbi predicted Russia as biblical Gog and the similarities are shocking. This was a news of the 27th of October of 2015 as you can see and they already started to smell that this could end up becoming what it is today and what it will be in the future. Shvili concludes that after the war of Gog and Magog, the prophecy of world peace, of beating swords into plowshares, of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4, will come into effect, centered around Jerusalem as the pinnacle of peace and holiness. Do you start to catch what I was explaining just a moment ago? Do we realize how Satan is going to make those biblical texts have an application for our days and evidently with a plagiarism to the truth to take everything to his side and the confused world is going to accept that false messiah? Do we realize how all of this is going now? With a total clarity. Well there was still another news left this was four years after the last one, the 3rd of December of 2019. Descendants of Gog and Magog joined Russia-Iran in joint military drill. 
The countries mentioned are interesting because they are those that are implied in the prophetic matter of Gog and Magog. Let's read what it says. O mortal, turn your face toward Gog of the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. Prophesy against him. Ezekiel 38.2 Iran announced last week that they will for the first time hold joint war drills with China and Russia. And you can see this was the year 2019, alright? The open coalition was already starting. One rabbi, an end-of-days expert, stated that this will bring together all the elements to end all of history. Rear Admiral Hossein Ganzadi announced last week that the maneuvers will be held in the northern Indian Ocean from December 22nd to January 20th. When we talk about joint war games, we are talking about two or more countries with a high level of relations in various political, economic and social fields which culminate in cooperation in the military sector, with war games usually being the highest level of such cooperation, Kanzadi said to Iran's Tasnim News Agency. A joint war game between several countries, whether on land, at sea or in the air, indicates a remarkable expansion of cooperation among them, he added. Maritime tensions in the region are high. Iran has been blamed for attacks against several tankers. In September, an Iranian drone attack destroyed half of Saudi Arabia's oil production capability. Iran has also been blamed for other attacks. In June, Iran shot down a US surveillance drone over the Strait of Hormuz. President Trump ordered a military strike against IRGC radar and missile sites, but ordered the military to stand down at the last moment. That same month, the US blamed Iran for attacks that damaged two tankers as they transited the strait. A series of similar attacks using magnetic mines has targeted tankers in the strait since the summer. Notice the situation that was at that moment, around three years ago, and how all this matter was already moving. Last month, the commander of US Central Command opined that a major Iranian attack is very possible. The US dispatched an aircraft carrier and tens of thousands of pounds of military equipment and artillery to the Persian Gulf region in response to these potential Iranian threats. And as you can see, all the petroleum matter is in the middle. And look at this now. What is highlighted in red is the most noteworthy of this news. One interpretation of the Bible has Russia at the head of the multinational army of the pre-Messiah war of Gog and Magog meaning before the arrival of the Messiah. Rabbi Chaim Shvili, a 20th century Jewish mystic, wrote a book of predictions concerning the Messiah in 1935. Remarkably, Rabbi Shvili understands the prophet Ezekiel to foresee the war of Gog and Magog as being launched by a Russian-led coalition. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. They quote, once again, Ezekiel 38, verse 2. Rabbi Shvili understood the Hebrew word in the verse Rosh, chief, as identifying Russia to be the leader of the Gog and Magog coalition. Rabbi Shvili predicted that the Russian-led coalition will be opposed by a coalition of comparable size, comprising soldiers from all 70 nations. We already saw what these 70 nations were referring to, you remember. The Bible explicitly identifies Iran's role in the war of Gog and Magog. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and leave you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed in splendor, a vast assembly, all of them with bucklers and shields, wielding swords. Among them shall be Persia, Nubia and Put, everyone with shield and helmet. Ezekiel 38 verses 4 and 5. And you see who they apply this to. Iran is the modern incarnation of Persia. It is interesting to note that some medieval Christian travelers to China reported the Mongol belief that their nation was descended from Magog. It is interesting, eh? The Mongolian Empire once included sections of Russia, China and North Korea. This is very interesting, alright? The Chinese and all the minority groups living in China are of a Mongoloid race, which stems from Noah's son Japheth. Etymologists have conjectured that the name Mongol 
is derived from the name Magog. Very interesting. So Russia, China and North Korea had been sectors of the Mongolian Empire. Well, and precisely so many years of history pass on and what do you know they are allies. Allies and you see what is already cooking, right? Rabbi Pinchas Winston, an expert in Jewish eschatology and author of many books on the subject, noted that this military exercise will bring together many elements that are predicted to be part of the final pre-Messiah war of Gog and Magog. All these events need to be considered because no one knows what will be the final events that spark off the inevitable, Rabbi Winston said as a disclaimer. This certainly has the elements and the potential, not only because it is politically and militarily charged, but even more so since it involves several nations that have the pedigree that makes them candidates for having an active role in the Gog and Magog war. Rabbi Winston noted that according to historical and Torah tradition, Magog migrated to the north. But nations have both a geo-national reality as well as a spiritual reality, Rabbi Winston said. Amalek, Gog, these are specific archetypal evils that can be anywhere in the world and any person. Every day the potential for Gog and Magog grows greater. The global pie is shrinking and the populace is increasing. As this phenomenon grows, selfishness gets unbridled and greed rules the world. People are grabbing what they can while they can. Battle lines are being drawn. History is coming to an end, the rabbi warned. The secular world sees time as an endless cycle, but the Bible repudiates all that. The Jewish perspective has a definite end point. That is what the concept of Messiah comes to teach us. If you see time as an endless cycle, then you can look at this union of Iran, Russia and China and say that it is nothing new and nothing new will come out of it. But if you think of Gog and Magog as the beginning of the end, it takes on a powerful new significance. Interesting this final sentence, well this final paragraph, because many apply that this is wars and rumours of wars and nothing else. But truly, if you apply Gog and Magog as the beginning of the end, ah, then things change quite a bit, don't they? Well, then now to finish, we are going to read what the, the end of this article says. A secular historian will see that this is the leaders doing something with human motives. But the truth is that this is Hashem, God, literally the name, doing something very special and we need to understand his motives. With the big picture, Everything is significant and everything comes together. Anti-Semitism, the impeachment in the US, the Israeli elections and this military union, it all comes together. Rabbi Winston cited Rabbi Yisrael Meir Kagan, a world-renowned Torah authority known popularly as the Chofet Chaim. Rabbi Kagan passed away in 1933 after the First World War but before the beginning of World War II. The Chofetz Chaim wrote that Gog and Magog would be a three-stage war. Rabbi Winston said he believed that World War I, what was called at the time the war to end all wars, was the first stage. Though he did not live to see World War II, we can assume that was the second stage. He predicted that the final war would be the worst of all. This is interesting because it reminds us quite a lot of that letter of the three world wars, right? Yes, what things, hey? How interesting it is to see our conferences from the number one when it was the year 2006. Because when now, after all of those years, you remember of what was presented, you say it is incredible to see how all of it is fitting together how everything is being prepared for what was planned. For what was planned by God in prophecy that unfortunately it was used to be interpreted in a very good manner but now absolutely not on behalf of many. And because now we can see clearly how the satanic plagiarism of God's prophecies are going to be. That will cause that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. And unfortunately, Satan is doing it marvelously. 
that is why we must continue giving this message with clarity for the time that it is for without confusions and going back to the roots to those origins to those Adventist pioneers that thanks to God were enlightened to know the truth studying the prophecy and as it was prophesied also in the last times their writings would be recovered what they said because it is especially necessary for our last days while what they were saying has already been forgotten stored practically forgotten completely and on top of that stamped on if someone speaks about it because they say no now there is more light well it might be they stick their fingers in the socket so that they have more light what a shame but that's how it is that is why the Lord has lifted a mini ministry to bring back those truths and proclaim them to the whole world so that the people can wake up and many can be saved everything is coming and we have it all in front of our eyes do we still want more evidence well we will have more evidence in the next conference where we will show a series of relations between Israel and Russia that are definitely setting a panorama and once again Maranatha 2031 the authentic moment of Christ's return not before may the Lord bless you